Hello? Can you guys hear me? Hello? Hello? Hey, what's up guys? If you guys can hear me, please uh, reply. There was something weird with the mic, so it seems like it disconnected or something. Okay, so we have confirmation from Facebook. And let's see who else. Uh, anybody else can, I think uh, YouTube as well. Everything's working now. Okay, awesome, thanks guys. We'll just wait a couple more minutes to see if other people can uh, join. Um, but I'm glad the mic is working now, which is great. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, things are going great. How's everybody Sunday morning? Anybody up even earlier than me? I got up like two hours ago, but uh, I'm sure some of you guys go out, get up and go hiking or do some activities, or maybe we're up super late and are just getting up. Yeah, we'll get started in a couple minutes. Uh, let's see. Switching to my other screen. Um, well, I'll start with giving you guys a little bit of a background if you guys haven't been here before. So I'm a visual effects artist working in film, uh, games, and um, VR and all anything 3D related. Uh, here's some of my here's my website with some of my past work. Uh, so my most of my film work and music videos and some commercials um, In case you guys want to check that out uh, Feel free to check it out. There's a few I still need to update my website a little more, but you know Some of these guys have some screenshots of uh, the actual thing some of the work I did some ZBrush screenshots of uh, of These guys some of the creatures and characters I worked on <coughs> Sorry um, Feel free to check it out. Um, if you guys don't want to check that out, you guys can check out my MDB, check out some of the projects I worked on as, as a character supervisor. Uh, we also have some of the collectible stuff that I that I do. Uh, when I do shows like Monster Palooza, uh, Designer Con, Lightbox Expo, and this is some of the stuff that I'm kind of showing you guys how to do on uh, on the stream. You know how to make your own collectibles, how to think about it. Um, you know preppy for that stuff uh, you know as you can see I have a variety of kind of styles um, so feel free to check this stuff out I also have my Instagram if you guys want to follow me uh, check out some of the stuff that I've been working on um, feel free to follow me there uh, you know a lot of stuff that I do traditional um, stuff on the iPad the 3d print stuff we'll talk about today uh, other events I attend with my some of my friends uh, at Nomen or at, at different uh, events where there's other artists talking about art and it's cool to always collaborate and go and hang out with people and see what they're what they're up to um, some more other things and also my gumroad I'll copy and paste this. Uh, here's where you guys can download my interface, my UI. So if you guys want to follow along or like some of the elements that I have, like the shaders or brushes and that type of stuff, you guys are welcome to come here and download it for free. Uh, let me post that link for you guys. I know some of you guys are asking. Uh, uh, one thing that I did that we'll talk about today, I uh, also scanned some pumpkins. Uh, I figured today we could do some pumpkin, um, kind of pumpkin carving. You can 3D print for your desk, or you can, um, you know, 3D print a life-size version that's more modified, that's easier to do here in ZBrush than to do in real life. Uh, maybe not for this Halloween, or maybe for if you have time, print it started tonight after you're done with it. Uh, or you could always, you know, just have fun with these things. Let's see, what do we got? So we'll wait one more minute. Get a sip of water. All right, cool. Looks like we got a good amount of people now. Thanks for uh, joining the stream. 
if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah, thanks for joining. So this is kind of where we left off uh, last week, right? Or two weeks ago with um, with this guy that I started for my Halloween costume. Um, you know, we got pretty far from something that was came from an iPad sketch to finalizing kind of here. Uh, but I took it a little further. I think I spent another hour or two kind of trying to just wrap it up. Um, and here's kind of what the end result was. Let's see. So, as you guys can see, added a lot more details, adjusted up some of the primary forms, sharpened some of the things that I thought might uh, help the silhouette and help the, the read of the whole thing. <coughs> what do you guys think? <coughs> Sorry, I've been, I've been coughing, so I'm going to keep doing that so you guys can't hear it. Um, so here's kind of what I ended up with. Uh, it was cool. Came out pretty good. I'll show you guys some of the making of. Uh, but yeah, you guys can see it was mostly it's, it's a lot of detail type of work, you know. Uh, just a little bit of changes to maybe some of the secondary forms. But um, yeah, this is kind of the detail. I, I overemphasized the detail because I knew I was going to 3D print it. Usually if I was just going to make this a render, uh, I probably wouldn't uh, over sharpen it. But uh, I'll kind of explain why. Uh, a lot of the reasons why you should over, sh over sharpen your 3D prints, I also added some asymmetry, is uh, it's because when you print it and you start putting like a primer and filler primer and paint and all these other layers of, of things, they tend to clog up the, the detail you have. So if it was already soft, it's just going to get softer. Oh, the volume a little bit more? Yes. Yeah, thanks. So any, any feedback is welcome because if I, if I can't... Um, See, is that better now? Uh, if you guys can hear me, is it is it too low? Is the music too loud, or is the music okay? Could be also that this is not going on my mouth. How's that? Is that better? Um, so, like I was saying, like some of these details got overemphasized, like they're a little harsh. But when you uh, 3D print them, they get a little soft, and then once you start doing the post process. Um, it gets a little um, even softer. So one of the main things that I did is uh, let's move this here. Is uh, key these guys. So sometimes if you lose your your gizmo, it might be somewhere else, right? You're trying to move this stuff. You can always turn that one off and go back to the old classic gizmo and uh, move some of this stuff out. And then when you switch back, it's it's there. And then you go always center it to get back again. That happens to me a lot when I'm working on something that's like, you know, way down there, like, and then I move the, the scope up. This is something that uh, is probably a common thing. So one of the main things that I did was making sure to add some keys to this. Um, it's important to make sure they're not squared because if you have square keys, when you try to shove it in, sometimes the tolerances on the print, or if the print got a little, um, like, not as it's not as accurate, it won't be able to shove it in. So one of the main things that I tend to do, and, and I'm sure you've seen other 3D printers. Uh, 3D print artists do this when they're engineering is make it a little tapered. Uh, there, it could have been a little shorter, but I felt because it's holding the horns, it's um, it should be pretty long so it could have the support to be able to hold them. And uh, here's a key on, on those guys. See, nothing crazy. Um, all I had to do is cut the horns off and then bullying them and then and then key that stuff in there. Um, which, you know, came out good. Each one of these pieces, I think the, the main skull part. Uh, was about 80 80 hours and that was even at low resolution nothing uh, crazy which let me show you what that looks like um, so this is what this is what the uh, how I printed it so the orientation you yeah, you could start from the mouth or from the back I started from the back because I figured that if there's any marring or any scarring of the of the print when you remove the supports it's at the back where you're not going to see it easy for me to, to stand or or just leave alone and not worry about it but in this case, I decided to just print it back that way. That way, you're, the main focus is the front and three quarters. So, if you don't see the artifacts in that, then it's it, that's good job. You know, uh, here's a another shot of that. But yeah, this thing is is huge. I'll show it to you guys. It's right behind me. Um, it's it's pretty big. Uh, some people could probably fit their two year old in there and the, this giant printer. 
Uh, let's see. This is me in, in my hand. You know, just wanted to make sure you guys can see where all the supports are at. Is this stuff even uh, interesting to you guys? Are you guys cool checking this stuff out? And this is just me test fitting it so I can see, you know, kind of what I planned, where I, where I marked my eyes to, to be able to see. Yeah, it's gigantic. Uh, and then I made a little more buffer room. I'll talk about that as well. Because uh, one, one thing that I did previously, I made a mask and it was too small because it was maybe only 5% bigger than the person's scan. And, and uh, there, you have to take account for the jawline and the, the cheeks and all that stuff, right? Because like once you slide it in, it might not fit. Um, so if you need to make it a little, like maybe 10% bigger of whatever scan you have. And uh, here's... Awesome. Let's see. Why isn't this now opening? Uh, okay, cool. So here's the first layer of primer. I did a, a little bit of sanding just in the back. I have better high resolution pictures that I'll post on my Instagram later. Uh, but the first layer is to put um, to put black and prime, primer filler, then black, because I was going to put gold on top of it, right? And here's, uh, here's the gold version. I kind of liked it gold. I almost wanted to leave it that way, but uh, since I plan to not not leave it gold, I just continued. Um, and this is kind of where my paint job uh, started, right? I went into Substance Painter before I even added any details, kind of like where I just had all the primary shapes. And then from there, kind of, let me lower the volume a little bit. It's a little too high. Um, did a quick render to figure out what my paint job was going to be. And this is kind of where I, where, I, where I settled. And I was like, okay, I like this. It's a little different. It's not just white. And, and uh, I decided to add the gold so that when you see it or a light flashes, like it's extra bright. And that's kind of what we, you know, what I ended up with, and then I tried to mimic that in the in the render. And at this point, I think I had two types of horns that I was playing around with, and <laughs> you kind of see them here. But this is just to get the idea of like what's going on. Do I like it? Do I not like it? Um, what potentials does it have? Let's see what else. Uh, so I was talking about uh, the form, right? So I had a scan of myself that I used. You know, pretty low resolution scan, nothing crazy. Just enough to get the primary forms and make sure that like the volumes are right. Uh, so one thing I ended up doing was, uh, let me turn these layers off. <coughs> was inflating in a bit. So that way I have a little bit of buffer room for everything in case there's there was some, you know, uh, something wasn't fitting correctly. So as you guys can see, that's a bit of the, of the buffer room I'm talking about. Just because sometimes you know things are not quite fitting right, so this is I, this is my my buffer to make sure that it's 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 safe. Um, cool. Let's see what else. Um, so that's kind of the, the 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 gist of it. Here's uh, let me switch over to this camera so you guys can see. I also ended up printing a small version of it just for my desk, you know, uh, just for fun. And same thing. I, I haven't really cleaned this one up. I just. You know, I just print it in and I put it away. Uh, here's some of the, here's the horns, how everything fits. Which is uh, pretty cool. You know, now I gotta uh, make a base, but here's the actual product. You know, so you can see there is the gold in there. And it's pretty pretty huge. Now I got to put a little bit of padding in there so that it doesn't just touch my skull as a raw print with paint. But I think it's gonna work. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah. A lot of the well, the work is the the cavities, right? Like you want to start adding more emphasis on the cavities. Like I might even still dip this in like black paint and then just soak it so that it picks up even more detail. Because there's, as you can see, there's tons of detail there. But uh, sometimes it's it's hard to pick up because I I did an interesting paint job on this that's. A little different than what I'm used to and it's working out but I feel like I could get more detail out of it oh thanks thanks guys uh, one thing that I did for town since I ran out of uh, I couldn't find my magnets my neonium magnets I uh, I double-sided taped it for now just to show you guys but here's like the you know the key everything just fits in perfectly and once you put it in I could even go outside like this and just use it like this for Halloween but I think I'm going to 
take some uh, magnets and just kind of plug them in there so that they're more um, here's obviously I can't put it out because my headphones but um, you guys can see my little friend here my little skeleton guy that's uh, kind of holding holding this guy and I have my my cloak so it should be uh, it should be pretty cool but it's cool for a little project for uh, for your Halloween mask or any cosplay or any type of stuff you guys want to do but you know each of the horns took about 15 to 18 hours and then this was 80 so it, it took a good uh, a little more than a week uh, to kind of get this get this all printed and it didn't fail and it was, it was all good on the race 3d <laughs> yeah the demon wearing the headphones right that would be cool that would be creepy because you're like whoa uh, but uh, the main thing for me is that it reads at a distance and it doesn't look like a bobblehead and for me I think it, it works what do you guys think? Is this the type of projects you guys kind of want to see in the future, like more of this type of stuff, or uh, or what? It would be guys to it would be nice to get your feedback, so that it, the, the stream is not too boring uh, for you guys, you know. But these are just little projects that I do, you know, for Halloween, for Monster Palooza. Uh, the I think the next thing I'm going to be printing out is the the next helmet, the the helmet we did in the previous stream. Um, but that one's going to really require some work because I have to really clean that stuff up, uh, all the filigree stuff. Uh, here, one, one thing that uh, that's really hard to notice because I filled it in really nicely is, um, let me switch back, is some of the 3D print lines, right? And there wasn't much. There was some back here. You kind of see some here, you know, but it's not as bad. It kind of looks like part of the detail. But it, it's like, it actually ended up being fine. I just had to sand, spend like 20 minutes just sanding that stuff and sanding all the edges so that it wasn't really sharp. Um, but if you look really closely, you really can't see much of that stuff, you know? And that's and that's because I added some of that detail that I was telling you guys about, like the the secondary, the all, all that fine detail, like overemphasize, like that really helps to hide a lot of that stuff. Yeah, there's some there, but with the primer fi uh, primer filler. Uh, after three cans of that stuff, uh, it fills in stuff pretty well. Uh, one of the main things, though, is to um, is to wait for paint to dry. That's the like the hardest part of this thing. Like uh, I had to like spray a layer, wait like 20 minutes, do something else, spray another layer because you don't want to like just force it and just go keep spraying and spraying. You know. Uh, let's see, I don't think I have the video of that, but uh, I'll be posting that on my Instagram later. Let's see foam replacement somebody sent something oh yeah yeah this is what exactly what I need I need to put some on the top and some on the side so when I put it on it's not like scratching my head awesome thanks for the link pretty cool yeah I was right now I'm just using the towel and I'm gonna also, also put like a black uh, mask on it so you can't see my eyes uh, like a like one of those like if you're gonna rob a bank type of thing it just makes it really hard because it pushes your eyes in so I might have to 3d print something or, or maybe get some of those foamy things and put them around my eyes so that it gives me a little bit of gap so my eyelashes don't get stuck on it but cool you know i hope you guys uh digged it um but uh, in the spirit of halloween i decided to 3d scan some skulls uh or some skulls some skeletons some uh pumpkins let me show you guys that uh, real quick um i'll show you guys some of my reference to of what potential things I want to do with with this pumpkin. So here's a little a little clip of uh, well I have my own scanner so that makes it easier for me to scan things obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, Christian Bale is bad. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so here's like a little video just to show you guys like um, let me speed this up a little bit. Uh, how I go about scanning stuff. I have an Einscan Pro. Uh, that it's a handheld scanner, so it makes it easy for me to scan some of this stuff. But I figured that we can probably make our own jack-o'-lantern today, and then uh, we could 3D print it. Um, I'm selling the files like really cheap for you guys to, if you guys want to download them or, or find your own or sculpt your own. But at this point, I figured that I'd rather spend more time creating the the monster than sculpting a pumpkin, so we could mix both. Uh, but here's a little bit of the how all that scanning works, you know, like just kind of takes a little bit of time I think it took me about five minutes to five to ten minutes to scan this stuff you kind of place it 
scan part of it, rotate it, scan that part of it. So you keep you keep scanning all the occluded parts. And that's kind of when you, when you see this stop here, that's kind of what that's doing. And here it's, it's trying to track where, where, you, where it was at when it was scanning. So you see all the blue starting to kind of fill in. It's pretty cool. I, I don't know, for me, it's, it's a great technology because you could just scan anything and adjust it, print it, and you go, you're back to uh, having it in real life. Any of you guys uh, experience with 3D scanning? I do a lot of photogrammetry and this type of stuff, but uh, not, not for fun until now. I'm starting to use it more for fun stuff. Yeah, and it's cool because, you know, your worst case scenario, you want to do a cool little piece for your portfolio. You can. You sculpt some stuff. Or, in this case, we're going to 3D print it. So, that's also cool. So, you're just showing you more of that. You know, me flipping it upside down to get the bottom. Kind of going through the handheld scanner. You can see, like, the live camera on the left corner. So this is kind of how you can scan your head and that type of stuff. I, I didn't use this scanner to scan my head. I just used like a old Connect scan that I had. I, I do have like a super high resolution scan, but you know, for for me just cutting, using it as a boolean, it's not really that useful because all that detail doesn't matter. It's going to be away from my face. Like it's going to have like a big, like maybe like an inch gap or half an inch. But yeah, this kind of, you know, just scan this stuff. It's cool. So that's kind of what I wanted to start with. Uh, here so we can kind of get started so one of the main things that I did uh, when you know when you get a scan uh, let's go back to this guy has a little bit of history let's see so if you show the floor this is how it came in right so it didn't come in usable so you have to Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of what I'm going to run through if you guys are interested. I know it's a, it's a little more boring, but I'll run through it so you guys can see, like, if you guys were to buy a scan or buy a scan from somewhere else or get something, you kind of have to prep it before you even get to use it. Because obviously, if you look at this, it's uh, up on its side, which is uh, not kind of the way I want to sculpt it, right? So one of the first steps that I did was uh, start rotating it and then kind of going to, like, the different angles. So from here, I wanted to tilt it a little more forward. And then a little from the other side. So I go to like the author graphics and then from there kind of adjust it, right? So from there, there's this one. And this one has uh, the texture. So one of the main things with the texture is that when you bring it in, you have to uh, rotate it twice and then flip it. And that makes it map correctly. If not, it's going to be mapped weird. Even though all the other places, um, oh, like Maya, would just take it in and be fine. But for some reason, ZBrush always have to rotate, rotate it, flip, and then it works. Oh, hey, how's it going? It was nice meeting you, Bella. Yeah, thanks for joining the stream, checking it out. I know it's a tough one for people to get up early on Sunday, especially after you had a, like, a, like a party night last night with Halloween parties or something. <laughs> uh, so once we get the texture on there, I want I make a duplicate, and that's, that's where I start creating. Um, so basically, you always keep track of all your originals, right? As you're going, you duplicate it out. And here, what I did was just uh, Z-Remesh it, because obviously the scan is super dense. I think it's uh, less than a million. I think it's like um, 700K. So here's the a, here's a scan by itself, which you can, can see this is, yeah, sure, you could use this with Dynamesh or whatever, but I first want to prefer to try to keep everything together. So the first step is to, let's get rid of the floor. Uh, z remesh it, right? So we z remesh it to make sure that we have something super low, maybe not the greatest apology, but at least it's even and some of the details are already kept. So the next thing is to reveal the original pumpkin, right? And then from there, I'll, I'll subdivide once, project, subdivide again, project. And that's kind of what I did with all these levels to up to level six, right? Where it's now matching as you know we could probably go level seven but are we really missing much probably not so if i turn this off and if i solo this you guys can see uh if it's if it's working let's see let me move this my keyboard on top doesn't have any arrows 
and it kind of kills me. But you guys can see here, see, I actually filled in with some of the holes. And then um, we didn't lose much detail. So if you wanted to retain most of the detail, you, you can, which is uh, pretty cool, right? So there from there, and then if we wanted to come back and reproject the texture, we can. But at this point, it's like, well, it's going to be 3D printed, so it doesn't matter. But we, we are prepared for that if we need to. Uh, what graphics card am I running? Uh, I used to run, uh, I think I'm running a Titan V right now. Uh, it's a pretty good card. Uh, disclaimer, I work for NVIDIA uh, <laughs> that makes graphics cards. Uh, so I'm used to using all the high-end high -end stuff. Uh, but I used to use, I used to have a 2080 in here, TI, uh, and, and that ran fine, but then I swapped to this because I needed more memory for a few other apps. Uh, and this is my personal computer. My work computer has some crazy amount of uh, video cards. Okay, yeah, if you have friends that are interested in this stuff, you know, let them know. But yeah, this is, uh, I put these up on my Gumroad, so check them out. If you guys uh, either scope your own, or it's always good to have as reference, because sometimes I'll tend to overcrank details on the pumpkin, and it's like, well, the real pumpkin kind of looks more like this, you know? Uh, so now that we have this, it has uh, subdivision levels. We can start uh, sculpting on this stuff, but first we have to save. Because <laughs> I do not want to do this again, and I'm sure you don't want to watch me do this again, so... <laughs> Lucky white, because I have a, a scanner or because of the video cards. Well, they do spoil me, but I'm also working on some high-end stuff, so it kind of balances itself out, right? So let's see what I'm kind of thinking about. Um, here's some reference that I'm uh, looking at. Make this bigger. Um, so I'm thinking some kind of a skull thing, uh, but th obviously there's so many different types of styles of, of this stuff, you know, um, which is cool. We can do like a cutout one, but you know, I really like like these type of things where like they're kind of um, like rotting and there's like a weird monster coming out of them. Like this stuff here, like this is pretty cool. So I think we're either gonna do something like that or, or something more skull. Maybe not like this, cause this feels almost like you just grabbed the 3D model and shoved it in there, which uh, is cool, but I feel like it kind of takes away from this this cooler nostalgic type of stuff. Unless it's something like this where like it's actually kind of feels like it's coming out like only on the surface. What do you guys think of some of the reference? Or this stuff, I, I really like this one. So we could always change the shape of the, of the pumpkin and make it uh, a little more cartoony and maybe reads better from a distance because if you have it in the front of your house, maybe you need it to be this extreme so that from a distance it reads. Yeah, yeah, the toothy one looks pretty cool, right? Like those, those really like pop. And then I was also thinking like, oh, something like this would be cool, but this is kind of more like a little alien creature um, that doesn't really have any detail. Uh, one that was really cool was this uh, Della Longfish one. Like it really gave me some some ideas for like maybe the neck piece or, you know, that type of stuff. And, and also playing with the stem. The first one, which was, uh, which one? Uh, is the one, the, this guy, the one with the, with the tooth? But yeah, so I'm thinking something like this, even, you know, we could even play around with some ideas like this because that could be cool from lit from the inside if we print it real thin then when you, when it, and print it with white, obviously, uh, material. But then there's also like really cool things like, like these guys where they're really, really stylized. And uh, I seen one before that I couldn't find the reference for where it uses a stem as a nose. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea too because I haven't really seen, seen that stuff. But then there's, you know, this stuff like a little more morbid and realistic i guess hey how's it going guys thanks for joining oh the iron maiden one yeah 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 exactly so that's why it's like really cool like the different type of styles so i want to kind of be inspired by this and um, i really wanted to scope one last night but i'm like let's just save it for the stream and just do it do it live because uh it'd probably be more fun that way but let's see we can get started with this stuff so I was trying to figure out what would be the easiest way to approach this because um, obviously there's a, some asymmetry. So you start sculpting one side. We could add the asymmetry later. But um, one of the main things that I noticed was like, well, they're kind of asymmetrical, right? So how do we protect the, how do we make this work so that we can sculpt quicker? Uh, so one way we, um, I was thinking we can do is um, easy, right? We append the sphere. 
let's see, let's get out of solo mode. And you just fear as our as our uh, sculpting thing, and then we could just blend them together. But we can use the base as a beginning. Um, so we make it a little smaller, right? And obviously, where's X? X is on this side. So we can start by doing working on this side or the opposite side. Yeah, so we can start on this side. I like this because it has a little more character, and we can see the stem a little better, you know. Even though we can modify all this stuff, like one of the main things that I wanted to do was just make the stem a little. Let's switch to my lasso tool. Read a little more because right now it's like it's cool, but it doesn't read as well as it probably should. Like it's it's kind of hiding. So if we're looking at this even with perspective, we see kind of goes away. So we can make that stem, you know, soften some of this stuff, some of the. So there's a couple ways to move it, right? You could move it with using that tool, or you could actually move it using this, and you just hold Alt and move the locator there. And you could stretch it, but I like moving it kind of, depending if it's a broad move, like maybe I could move it like a little bit that way and then use the, the move tool to kind of uh, help me make it wider a little bit more. And the main thing is to make sure not to lose track of all the different views because sometimes you might be sculpted from the front and it looks terrible from the back. So even from here to there, you know. Let's go back. Like it went from being from there to there. So now it reads a little better, right? What do you guys think? Uh, do I use a tablet? Um, yes, so right now I'm using the Cintiq uh, 24, I think, or yeah, 24 uh, 4K one, which is really nice resolution. But uh, for my day job, I use just a regular medium tablet, like the medium, uh, the latest one, medium pro. And that's plenty of work. So you don't really need this, but this is nice to have as another option. Uh, for a while, I actually didn't like uh, Cintiqs. Uh, I had two different ones before, like the previous 24 and something else. And after a while, I just didn't like it because the resolution was kind of bad. Uh, so I, I decided to try it one more time with a better resolution, and it actually makes a huge difference now. Like, I don't see the pixels, and it feels like I'm actually on the screen because the parallax uh, is actually, like, really minimal. So I would highly recommend, if you're on the on the market, get one of these. But I know there's also X-Pen that has some really, really good prices. I was actually thinking of picking one up just to try it out. Uh, I think they were like in the $400 range or something this big for a 22 inch. Um, so, yeah. Uh, how long have I been using ZBrush? Uh, it's probably f since 2003 or four. <laughs> so it's been, a, it's been a long time. Like one of my first creatures that I ever made in ZBrush was uh, a creature, like a werewolf creature for a TV show named Charmed. That's like the first time I actually used it in professional uh, for a creature, for something you saw on, on TV. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's um, it's cool. It's uh, it's fun. But, you know, it takes time. So, like, take it easy. That's why I try to minimize. Like, if you look at my layout, it's all made pretty simple with all the brushes that I have here. So that this is, like, the main brushes that I use. So it's really a handful. Like, it's probably just four of them. But then these other ones are a little extra things that I use sometimes, especially when doing concepts. Um, but I would recommend, you know, just diving in or, or trying my interface. Oh yeah, the, the X-Pen 22. Yeah, I heard good things about it. I haven't used it. I, the only thing that I heard that it's, it's kind of annoying is that you might need to charge your pen, but that's, that could be, I think it comes with two pens, so maybe it's not a big deal, but I think I would be annoying if I'm like in the middle of the night trying to work on something and then you have to use uh the pen you know so let's see so i think we're gonna try to go with uh it's like kind of skull so here i'm just kind of laying out some stuff right we're gonna we're gonna switch to our to our sphere soon i just kind of want to block stuff out so we can see kind of where it's supposed to be at 
maybe where are the eyes of the skull. Here's when we have to switch back to the last to the pen tool. So here I'm just kind of looking at my skull reference that I had, that I had in my. Um, turn on right so let's switch over to this guy and we know it's gonna be a skull so we can move all this stuff forward and here's where you can use some of this stuff to be a little more rough and um, We could dynamesh this too. So later on, we could rotate the whole thing and, and make it a little more symmetrical. More symmetrical. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. See, that's good to know because I, I didn't know if it was something you had to swap like every six hours or something or. You know, um, but it's not like you're using the pen all the time unless you're used to using the pen like in Maya or something, right? Which you can, but. So here's something. Well, let's continue our skull, right? Because we want to make sure we integrate it as, uh, later. So let's play around with this stuff. So this is the middle of our skull. You know, here I'm just kind of sketching some ideas right like where uh, all this stuff will be at nothing crazy i'm sure it looks oh look at that the symmetry is broken on this that's interesting see the things that happen right no big deal um, we'll just continue on this because why not make it asymmetrical? Let's see, clay tubes. Well, one thing we can do now is uh, smart resim. Wow, look at that. That was awesome, right? <laughs> it happens. I think at this point we're super early on, so we can... Hmm. No biggie. Let's try something else. So let's get rid of that guy. Make sure we turn symmetry on, right? Maybe move him down a little bit. Shrink him down so he's inside. And apply Dynamesh. And let's try that. It was weird. I don't know why it was doing that. Pretty strange. So we're, we're just, I'm just trying to block out a little quick uh, sculpt, a little quick skull, so nothing, nothing groundbreaking. But we'll see, we'll, we'll keep it fun. Music up a little bit. And one thing we can do too is separate the jaw. We'll do that. We'll do that a little later. We'll just keep adding some detail, right? What do you guys think? Uh, clay tubes, there we go. That's what I was looking for.
you guys have any questions, let me know. So I was looking at the three quarter angle, just figure out how much this other stuff is sticking out. Playing around the bra. Let's see how that's looking. All right, we need to shrink it down a little bit. All right, so this is kind of what we're thinking about. So, you know, it's super rough, but now we can see that we need to eat away Maybe stick that out a little more. Eat away at this pumpkin that we have. Uh, we could do it at a pretty low level. And remember, since this is not symmetrical, we have to do both sides. Right. Which is not a big deal, whatever. I'm just kind of using damp standard to be like super rough with it. Yeah, so I'm going to dynamesh and then project and then blend blend it in between. So that way it's just like, we don't have to worry about the asymmetry. We can just kind of play around with something symmetrical and then make it asymmetrical later. So now we have to scope both sides now. And it's like, we don't have time for that. You know. But you can, if you had time, like this was early October... This would be a perfect time to do that, but since this is just kind of spread of a moment type of thing. And then we could also modify the punk it to kind of fit the shape of the skull if we need to, you know? But at least it's based on the real punk it, so when you put it out there, it actually looks real as opposed to like some weird shape. But we could also make it more cartoony like some of these other shapes and elongate it maybe. Like if we just, uh, like if we felt like we needed more, more, um, more headspace we, we can we could give it a little more just you know just be careful not to do, overdo it but see even that that's not too bad now we're seeing that it has a little more cranium that could work so let's go back to this guy uh, go back to damn standard so I tend to be pretty rough with this stuff as you guys can see because it's just the faster we look at the, the idea, the faster uh, we can see if it's working or not. And here, okay, I feel like it's starting to work. But now the job... Oh, one thing that I... Sorry, I was looking up that uh, I didn't show you guys, which I think this is the, the way I want to go. Is... Uh, let's see, where's the reference? Where's the reference? I just added last minute to my... Uh, Uh, was a was a bulldog skull. I thought it was really cool if maybe the it has a underjaw that's like protruding out, like an underbite, and I think that will make it look more more creepy than less less human, more creepy, and that's kind of what we're going for, right? So what do you guys think? Like look at that structure. That's uh, that's pretty insane. I think that would read pretty good coming from a pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? It's like it's pretty creepy because if you saw a skull, the yeah, skull's cool, but. What if it was some weird skull? It's like, oh crap. So that's kind of what I want to try to emulate. That's like the last thing I saw that I was like inspired by. So I guess this is a good time to split the bottom jaw. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do that, right? Um, one thing I do that's like super easy for me because I'm lazy is um, like duplicate it, right? And then just, uh, oh, switch the lasso tool. Just uh, hide and delete the not stuff that's not seen, and then dynamesh it so that we have that separate. And then go to the other one, and um, do the same, but invert it and hide that and delete that. So now we have the job by itself, and then we just dynamesh that as well. So 
So now we have both of those separate. We could start playing around with that with that silhouette, right? Let's see what some of that. Yeah, I know that's crazy. Yeah, it was online. I just I just typed in bulldog skull because <laughs> I remember seeing like a skull that was really different, uh, and and the bulldog skull tends to be really different because the nasal cavity is like so pushed in, and, but the lower jaw is so big, which I think it looks looks pretty awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. Like if you one website that I recommend is uh, boneclones.com. Uh, maybe we can go to it now. Let's see, hold on. Let's get this out of the way. Yeah, if you're in California, Bone Clones is, uh, I think, in the valley. So it's a really cool place to go visit. They have tons of, like, skeletons they are built. Um, but one thing that's really nice is that they have uh, a huge collection of skeletons. Uh, anything from human to animals to, you know, all kinds of stuff. And now they started scanning and 3D printing things smaller, so it's nicer to have on your desk. Um, but yeah, you could, I would highly recommend checking this website out and going through their catalog because sometimes you see stuff here and they have a good front and three quarters side view. So that kind of helps. But uh, maybe it's easier also to spot it here and then Google it. Uh, so I would definitely check them out if you have uh, if you have time. They're really, really nice stuff. Even Gorilla, Gorilla stuff, which is awesome. And of course, always try to have a skull <laughs> nearby. I always... I always have these little tiny skulls from uh, anatomy tools, um, the magnetized ones. I really like those just because, um, you know, why not? So let's continue on with this reference. Let's hide this guy. So it's important to also keep, uh, let's see, it's symmetry, yeah, to keep. Um, to keep that punk in there so we can see what's what's happening with that because you don't want to be sculpt a, a skull and then you can't see it you know so in this case it looks like we might need to make it wider and of course this is we're not trying to match it perfectly but we're trying to use it as inspiration so but you see now we now we feel like we need to eat away at, at the, the sides We could also make that pumpkin asymmet asymmetrical, but I'd rather keep the asymmetry because it makes it feel more real. I want to see more of the cheekbones too, so we want to eat away at that as well. Awesome. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, so now we're playing with that, right? So once some of the, we had to start playing with some of the negative space on the jaw. Maybe here we can start eating away just a little more. Well, every time you do it from one side, since it's asymmetrical, try to do it from the other side. I also want to make this feel like it's coming from the bottom, from the actual bottom of the pumpkin. So maybe we can start playing around with that taper. So when we taper here later, everything just kind of blends. Because it's pumpkin, let's change the color of it too. Add some teeth. Oh. Well, actually, let's remesh it a little higher. Start getting some of that creepy factor in. Uh, it's starting to get there, right? What do you guys think? Super early on, but at least I see some potential. Let's see, let's play around with this stuff. Making it angry. See, these guys have this... Uh, so they, they taper pretty far back. Oh. 
is nice because that, that tapers up to our pumpkin. Any questions out there so far? Everything cool? So one thing we could do this early on too, actually let's save, <laughs> is uh, start playing with some of the boolean stuff so we could see what it would look like if it was hollow inside. And one thing I like doing for that, since we have this pumpkin that we're modifying, right? Uh, we can always take that one, which is this guy here, uh, duplicate it, and just uh, shrink it down, which is let's, let's isolated so we can see what we're actually doing. Go to level one. Uh, let's see, deformations and inflate in the negative. So you guys can see it shrink. Of course, some stuff will probably get messed up, like this stuff, but we can just hit it with the smooth. And then, if everything's correct, uh, we can hit those little two circles, uh, light boolean, let's turn off our skull, and this is our guy. I should have cut it out. Let's move that forward. Let's see what, what's going on here. Oh, wrong one. There we go. So now we're getting the, the hollow part. It was weird, just some weird thing that wasn't working. No biggie. Let's make this one higher. Cool. So now we can use this guy to make it look like it's it's hollow. Which is pretty cool. The only thing you have to keep in mind is like what actual surfaces are you adjusting and because this is asymmetrical <laughs> we have to deal with uh through both sides but no big deal and then you can up res it to give it a little more resolution so whatever pen whatever's penetrating through that's the part that where it's going to get cut out so if we go back to boolean let's see if we can see that now Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? I'm doing pretty good. How to get faster at ZBrush? Do it every day. <laughs> Do as much as you can. At least dedicate one hour to studying, like making a pumpkin, making a skull, making a skeleton, sculpting a face. You know, like practice, practice this stuff. That's like the main thing. Um, because if you don't practice, then you don't you don't make those mistakes and. The, the biggest thing you want to make mistakes as quickly as possible right and if you can't then that's not a good thing because that means you're when you're actually in production you're going to be making those mistakes so here one thing that we're going to start modifying that bulldog skull and start playing around with uh like what would it look like if we if it started coming out of out earlier from skull right but also tapering it, kind of following like the the real one. Yeah, thanks for joining, guys. Really appreciate you guys uh, joining the stream. Hopefully, it's not too boring for you guys, um, and it, trying to keep it more fun. 
but this is kind of you know what it takes to do events do like your own collectibles so let's see let's start cutting some of this stuff away oh wrong tool So this is where we can start tapering this stuff up and also adjusting our uh, our dummy object maybe too. It's so cool that they added this, this Boolean stuff, it, it really changed the way I do things and the way I'm sure many people do things. You see what's nice about it now is we know we have that big gap so we can go and adjust our skull to kind of fit that gap in, right? Yeah, that lower jaw is gonna it's gonna kill it that's the part that's gonna really change it because even at this distance um see one th one object one thing i like to do too is create a dummy object like a sphere and then just shrink it so then when you're looking at all this stuff like there's no highlighted jaw or highlighted anything look at that that's already kind of see we're just looking at the fake blend this is without me doing anything just kind of playing around with that and you kind of see it already blending together right so let's keep going on this so you see how it gets highlighted it's good when you're working on it but now when you're trying to see it as a you know just as a visual to to see like if this is all working or not i guess it's pretty distracting that's what i mean all this stuff back so let's uh let's do the more harsher way oh it's that sphere i made <laughs> so here's where we can go up a little bit on on resolution on this guy because we're gonna have to uh play around with the ridge And I'm being super rough with this stuff right now, so we could always redo it some other way, you know? But it's more about uh, you guys just trying things out, right? That's like the main thing, like seeing, seeing that even professionals make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes. That's like the main thing, right? Like uh, at least in my teachings, when I teach at different schools, like No Man, Studio Arts, uh, online, is to teach people that it's, you wanna make these mistakes as quickly as you can so that you could pa move past them and just start start getting to the good stuff. And I think a lot of people are, fr are afraid to post, post mistakes or talk about them and you shouldn't be, it should be, should be something you embrace. Yeah, let's check this out. Um, this guy looks more like a diamond actually which is kind of cool i don't think i ever sculpted a uh, bulldog before but today's that day <laughs> all right let's add some teeth to make him look more creepy and it looks like his his actual jaw or his mandible is a lot higher. Yeah, the B-Day. <laughs> yeah, how is everybody doing? Hopefully this is not boring you. You know, try to keep it a Halloween theme because Halloween's uh, this week, you know, coming up. Anybody dressing up as anything cool or making their own costume? 
I have always been into monsters, and this is the first time I actually made my own like mask, which is kind of insane. I, thinking back at it, like all these years, I, I'm always into monsters and going to Monster Palooza and all this stuff, and this is the first time I'm actually taking taking charge and making my own stuff. But I think it just sparked an idea for me to continue making my own stuff, like for me to wear, for my kids to wear. A couple of years ago, I made a Princess Mononoke um, mask for my for my kid, but she was too small, so she couldn't wear it. So I think I might actually have to uh, print that out and have her wear it this year. Now she's four; she's super into it. I'll have her watch the movie, and we have a white a white uh, husky. So I think this is a perfect combination for all that. See, once this stuff starts getting pretty dirty and ugly, it's like really hard to sculpt. So this is when we have to um, let's turn off that light boolean now. Uh, let's remesh this. And now we got some nicer topology to deal with. Let's see. How's the music? Is the music kind of boring for you guys today? I mean, it's not as good as it usually is. So let me try to change it to something more, a little more upbeat, because uh, we only have another hour. All right, let's see. When should you turn off uh, symmetry? I want to say like 80, 75 to 80 percent there. When you feel like, okay, uh, all the major forms are done, what can we do now? That's that's when you start. Once you start adding detail too, that's when you want to turn turn it off. But you always want to have a copy of this stuff. Yeah, don't forget to save, you're right. Thanks for the reminder. Thanks. Uh, what was I talking about? Um, oh, asymmetry, yeah. Like, you want to just go pretty far and then save your work in case you screw up. Oh, yeah, this is pretty epic. I'll just turn it down just a little bit. Yeah, I like this music. So this is where I play around with different shaders, you know, see what see what's going on with this. Also play around with perspective. I had some issues recently with some of this perspective stuff where like it doesn't always work. Like once you hit 50 or 85, like after a while, it doesn't actually do much. But that could just be a, a bit of a glitch on my end or... Yeah, this music is much better. It feels super epic. <laughs> like we're gonna go build an army to kill these jack-o'-lantern people. Or so here it feels like we're starting to get pretty flat here. So I'm gonna start going in there and erasing some of the stuff that I have and. whole skull up a little bit yeah I want to be able to see these teeth and I feel like they were getting kind of lost it also could be that this jaw Yeah, exactly. Pumpkin wearing orcs. It'll be kind of cool though. We have to fight like some crazy, uh, crazy creatures that you could just like get a hammer and smash their faces and destroy them. That would be cool. All right, let's make this a little taller. As you guys can see, I'm always softening that. I move it a little bit and. It's Soften it up a little more, move it a little more, just slightly. All right, 
cool. Let's see, we're getting there. What can we do about that jaw? I think we need to make that jaw kind of come out more from the sides. We'll also have it taper in. I think at this point, we gotta remesh this guy too. Add some more teeth, because why not? to that orange. Let me start defining that. Some more teeth down here. Because how is he going to eat you, right? If he doesn't have any teeth. You guys dig in where this is going? Remesh that to fix those issues. Let's a little bit more resolution here. Let's go to let's go to five twelve. So whenever you get issues like this, uh, sometimes no matter how much you smooth them, they're not going to get fixed. Uh, so this is a good time to use your inflate. And just kind of get those guys to all interpenetrate. And then when you smooth them out, see, nice and clean, right? I'm just holding out to give this guy a little bit of a cavity. So when we're looking at him like this, there's there's an offset for the jaw. So how many of you guys out there are students, uh, professionals, uh, a little bit of both? What are you? What are your specialties, or what do you guys do?
Eh, it's getting there, right? Let's see. Let's continue on this part. Last thing to have gotten messed up, so we can remesh that guy again. So we're going to clean up some of these forms, right? Because we want some of this stuff to... read much nicer so one of the main things that I always tend to think about and, and do is um, lumpiness right I used to have a huge issue with it and now I just fix it as soon as I see it because uh, if not it becomes a bigger issue later so there's like three or four forms coming out of here that weren't making any sense we want to clean this up so that it's nice and legible like it just reads really nice from a distance right so this is where we can uh, we got that cleaned up. You can see it here, like no longer lumpy, right? But we also want to make sure that it feels hot edge, right? So we can start introducing some and this song, I'm just kinda of going off now and just kinda of playing around with this stuff, you know, like to my tooth my tooth kind of messed up but whatever gets messed up we'll fix it so one thing that I have is a smooth stronger uh, which instead of me rubbing a whole bunch of times I rub only a couple times um, you guys can find find that under uh, brush uh, smooth brush modifiers and you could change that to one two and you guys can see here the tip tool it tells you everything you need so instead of using the smooth stronger tool, uh, you guys can use this and that, that's why you'll see me go back and forth between when I held shift, it'll go back and forth between zero and one because sometimes I just need it to be super strong like here. And I could just kind of take care of that, you know? See now that, that helped, that sharpened up my tooth again. I don't know when that happened, but whatever. We'll fix it, right? That's what we're here for, to fix anything. Let's add some teeth to that guy. You guys cool with the Halloween theme this week? All right. So here we'll try something different to show you guys like what you guys can do. As you guys can see, you can move them all at once. It does about the same thing as moving them this way, but here from here I could start modifying these these guys. And remesh those guys, maybe make these front ones just a little bit or make all of them a little sharper. And then from there we need some top teeth, right? So Kind of, we forgot to add a little bit of the top mandible, <laughs> but whatever, we can fix this now. Because the mandible wouldn't be going inwards, it's it has to be kind of arching. So, it's kind of, we can take care of that. You see how, so there's a, it's kind of a big gap there. We definitely don't want that. So this one we can use our friend, the clay fill that gap in right I remesh it and now we're all back to normal so do you have any questions yeah yeah it doesn't have to be relevant it could be about design it could be life it could be grass whatever you want uh, preferably zebrush but you know I'm here for anything move regular move for sure. I used to use snake hook a lot, which I think I still have here, but um, I noticed that move is much nicer, especially like having it, the intensity like at low. If you see my, my intensity is never at the default. It's always like at eight or 12 or in this case, 17. I prefer it much better. It, I feel like I have much better control, especially for this stuff, right? Like see how the teeth now are going forward. Like if I have it pretty low, I could get them to arch back pretty quick 
and have give them that volume they need. Where snake hook, like you can, but I I I rather just use that, use this, unless I'm making horns or something that I, that really needs to be like manhandled. That's when I use um, snake hook. That and move topological. So move topological is like my favorite too, just because it's just, it's really like direct. Uh, this music started epic and it got weird. <laughs> yeah, manhandled. It's like, dude, you're, you're you gotta do what I tell you. You're my polygons, you know. <laughs> I'll just add some of those uh, back teeth. Got distracted manhandling my polygons. So here we can do the reverse. What I was doing on the other ones was pushing inwards or um, pulling them out. But here I might I might do the opposite. Still doing this, some some of that, you know, adding them, giving them a little volume so they don't feel just extruded. That's so why you can use that move topological so that it doesn't touch that other tooth. Or if it does, you see how you can make them look like they blend much nicer. But also my move topological should probably be lower. Hey, what's up? How's it going, brother? Yeah, man, it's been a while. Thanks for joining the stream. I'm glad uh, you made it. You made it out. I'm sure. I know you're in. Uh, you're in Greece, right? So time, time over there is uh, way different. Is it nighttime over there right now, or is it uh, daytime? Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate you joining. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to have so many different artists uh, uh, join. Is it 7.30 p.m.? Oh, nighttime. Wow. Yeah, here, we're just getting started, man. Making uh, <laughs> making pumpkins for Halloween. Like your own jack-o'-lanterns that are creepy. Yeah, George is a really amazing artist. If you guys haven't checked out his work, uh, please do. It's... Uh, Pretty inspiring. And some of the other artists too. So See now that we got those teeth in there, it feels it feels more creepy, but I feel like they need to come out even more because from the front they're not reading. There we go. Now we're starting to get them from the front. Now we could push these guys back. So for some of you guys that just joined, we're making this uh, kind of jack-o'-lantern pumpkin for you to either 3D print or for you guys to make a full-size version, full -size version or a tiny thing for your desk. Um, and I, I started off with a scan that I'm going to blend in my sculpt into. Um, it's just, just saving. Um, so that it has a more realistic look to it, you know? Um, see, we, can, we could uh, keep all the detail from the scan. And not have to scan a sculpt, uh, pumpkin because, well, you want to get to the nitty gritty and fun stuff, right? So why sculpt, uh, sculpt a pumpkin? Um, let's see, how's this looking? All right. And it looks like our 
bone, we need to adjust some stuff. Did any of you guys get that uh, Rick Baker book that just came out? The reason I'm asking is I'm a huge Rick Baker fan. It's, it's some amazing work. Uh, I haven't picked it up yet because I forgot to pre-order it. I had it on my cart and I never press pre-order. So I'm waiting to, I want to go pick it up today at some store. If I, if I can, that would, uh be much nicer because then I have it today and I could check it out and get more inspired to do cool cool monsters because who doesn't like doing cool monsters right I hope that's the reason you guys are here <laughs> Yeah, man, this is, yeah, I got, I got the mask done. It's finally, uh, finally done, you know? I'll, sh I'll show it to you guys. Maybe some of you guys uh, came in late, but George just came in. It's, uh, you know, I got, got the paint job done. All ready to go. Ready for Halloween, you know? Just got to put a little bit of patty in there so I don't get all that paint that I put inside. <laughs> All on my head. Yeah, I think it's massive, man. It, it took forever. I, I was hoping it was not going to fail, and it, it didn't. But it was, uh, I was like, okay, got to keep watching it. It's like your baby. Just keep watching it. Because uh, if it fails, it's an 80-hour print just for the head. <laughs> and I did not want to start that over. But, well, it's okay to start it over. But because of Halloween, I needed to have it done like mid, like this weekend that passed. So that I can actually paint it this last couple of days. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was just a spreader moment. I figured, why not just start making my own Halloween stuff, you know? I have friends that do their own stuff, and it's always inspiring to see them do it, but uh, they're always hustling, too. But this year, I'm like, why not? Let's just Let's just do it. So this is where we're starting to blend more of the... Whoa, that was a weird glitch. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. Wow, this music went from epic to not epic at all. Let's, let's go back and change this. I started using this uh, Pretzel Rocks uh, app to listen to music that's, um, I guess, royalty free. Uh, but sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can start. We can start blending in some stuff. Let's see what do we got. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, checking out my website. Yeah, the dinosaur. I think he was. Uh, I, I think he was maybe 12 of them or 20. He wasn't that many because at that point we were not going crazy like we are now, where we're using 50, 100 udims. You know. Let's change this music again, cause. Alright. Uh, so yeah, it was. It was about. Um, it was. It was about 20, maybe less than that. Um. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's going to have a humanoid body. I think at this point, it's just like a little ornament you print out for your desk, like like these little skulls, you know, like something that you have on your desk. But I could, it could be like a henchman for like a, I guess a Halloween king or something, you know, like like give him a little body that's like maybe like little, like a little upright uh, bulldog or Frenchie, like a little small little guy. That, that could be cool too, actually. So I start playing around with the stem and extending his proportions a little bit or something like that, you know. Yeah, he's kind of like a little bit of a monster, but kind of based on the on a bulldog skull. So at this point, we could start like modifying some of that, or also like blending, 
blending in like the like some of the features like here like i think we need to make these eyes just like pop more so we can start making them feel a little more creepy Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Let's see, so at this point, what we can do is start playing around. With how are we blending this? How are we blending this pumpkin in? Let's get rid of the inner, inner parts. It's not the inner part. It's our jaw. This guy. So how can we start blending this in, right? So at this point, we, I think we can start tapering some of this. And this is, I guess, a nice part about it being asymmetrical, right? That it's probably going to blend in a couple different sections. Let's move some of this stuff back. So I try to keep things separate as much as possible until the last minute and then we could blend them together because then uh, you have a lot more control or if you decide to change your mind, you're still free to kind of uh, explore that. But as soon as you start blending them in, you're kind of stuck with the items and that kind of, it could be a setback. So I prefer not to do it that way, but you know, it's up to you. So here I'm just making sure that all the cavities are as far back as we can so that like let's say you have it sitting on your porch or something and you do a quick render. See that's already reading like it's part of it. So now I just got to do some more blending. Make sure all those cavities are, are deep because that's where the shadows are going to fall. If your cavities aren't deep, even like the jaw, I need to start making uh, this jaw kind of a uh, Going deeper at this point because jaws aren't aren't that thick. This is where we can move this stuff down. Yeah, I'm glad so many people are joining the stream. I really appreciate it, guys. Especially all the guys that I, all the people that I know. I know it's it's hard to different time zones and all kinds of stuff. Um, but I really appreciate you guys being here because uh, it helps me to make sure that I, you know, I keep doing this for, for you guys for fun. And, and if you guys have questions, I can help out in some way. Yeah, there we go. See, now that's starting to read better. I probably have to start playing with those mandibles. make that tooth a little stronger because let's see is there any comments oh thanks yeah yeah that's that's the whole point right like you have these little guides that kind of could help you you could start directing this stuff to kind of feel like it's incorporated part of the pumpkin um, and I, I think that's a big thing right because it's part of design it's all about the flow like like especially with this design like the flow of everything flowing forward like that's that's a huge a huge thing well, at least for me it is so like like this is supposed to arch down but maybe we can start tapering up as well or or the way this is kind of coming flowing in you know like the jaw part like this is where we could start like shifting this back 
and now you're starting to get like uh like start playing around with this and start incorporating that into that line and this into that but let's add some more resolution before we do that even this stuff into this you know because it's it's coming it's fused together so it's okay if it's fused together in a, in a strange way as long as it feels right Sometimes if something's not working, we can start actually tapering it even sooner. But maybe see here, it's starting to become a little lumpy. So maybe we start pushing this down a little bit. So from the three quarter it still reads. See, that's, that's what I'm trying to keep this. Let's continue to incorporate this in. You know, so there you go. Like that kind of plays straight into that. Or even some of these lines could start tapering. Okay, a little more. I feel like we're missing something here. So here I'm just kind of going the reverse uh, of them standard and kind of starting to add some of these harder ridges oh. by holding alt. So I see a lot of it's just making your primary forms pop and then start adding your secondary stuff because if you don't have the right the, the right primary forms like here this is kind of weird so i'm trying to like rebalance it back out um and then you just start making things pop and then everything just looks much much nicer and clean i think that's the biggest thing right clean let's see i can use my mag knife here One thing that uh, happens with teeth, they also have a little bit of a bump here. So, you know, they're inside. So they need to have like a little bit of a cavity where they live, you know. Uh, I, I'm talking about this because I was at the dentist for the last uh, two weeks and they did like some root canals and I got to learn a lot about dentistry. Not in the most uh, fun way, but... Uh, So a lot of it's pushing out and then pushing in. So here I'm gonna go back in here and just kinda hit some of this stuff back in so that it feels like. You now this one got a little lumpy, so we can either do some clay to kinda help them adjust. Or also do some um, H polish to kinda take away. At this point, I feel like this, I want this to be popping right on top of, even though it's not a gum, to feel like it's, um, see how it's, it was lumpy there, but not there. And those are the type of things I'm low, always looking at because it's, you know, it's, it's important for you to be able to adjust that and at the, in the big picture, you, you will notice 
all those things that they work and don't work and, and why something looks weird and doesn't look right because it's not incorporated correctly. See, it's much more clean. Yeah, we could add a little bit of an S curve on it by tapering it here. Same thing with these guys. You know, maybe they're popping up, but they always have to come back in. So they're always feel incorporated back in. Hey, how's it going? Arturo Martin 23. Oh, thanks. I know it kind of fits the theme, right? The orange, uh, the orange stuff. Oh, let's not forget to save. Wow, only 20 more minutes. It's going pretty quick. I guess I'm, I'm having fun, so this is this is good. Hopefully you guys are not bored and are having fun as well. Any of you guys doing something else while watching this? Um, at work or something or... this guy in there and this is where we could start adding some of this stuff hopefully they both line up on both sides if not then I'll have to redo this oh, pretty close enough so this is where we make it, it we don't want it to feel like it's just extruded out right like it's just kind of sticking out let's see Awesome. I'm glad you had, you, you know, some of these tips are helping out. Uh, our real engine notes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes you need something else in the background while you're doing some game, en game engine work. Or trying to learn something new, right? So these were some of the, some of these things I, you know, this was makes it feel like it's not incorporated. So this is where we can start kind of tapering that off. Not everywhere, just in some areas, because it will be natural for some of the cavities to not sync up with any of this stuff, you know? But like you see here how maybe a, a little bit of this could help so that it, it, it transitions nicely as opposed to like feeling cut out. Or in some case, we do the opposite. How many of you guys uh, have 3D printers and are printing uh, your models from ZBrush? And also, what kind of printers do you guys have? Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, that new printer. I, I, did you get the giant one or... The transform is that the gigantic one that's like uh, like a print like a helmet size. I think it's uh, the frozen, right? Yeah. That's one printer. That's an experiment that I really want to get. Uh, I think it would be cool to to do like some of the stuff that I'm doing like helmet wise and and that type of stuff. See, so we're here, we're trying to take care of some of that tapering by adjusting our skull. Just so it feels nice. Nice transition. You know, in some other areas, we could start using, if we go down to a lower subdivision, we don't destroy our details so we could start maybe that was too low 
Yeah, it's a massive volume. That's it's it's crazy. And the price the price point on that thing is is insane. Yeah, I have a few printers. I have the the slash that I haven't even taken out of the box, the new slash fat, the faster one. I have a Form 2, a Race 3D N2 Plus, and a CR10. Um, but I've been thinking about getting one of those little ones, the and then the giant one that either they're <coughs> frozen uh, or the um, Piopoli one. Uh, either one of those two would be amazing to get. Yeah, let me know how it goes with that printer, man. I'm really uh, interested to hear your reviews. See, this side tapered really nicely, even this one is kind of weird, but not a big deal. We could just fix it. Let's put this a little higher. I guess this is where we could turn off the the the, the, the symmetry, so we could blend this stuff nicer. Because at some point, like see, this plays in nicely to this. See, so here we can start playing around, oh, I guess this one has symmetry on. We can start playing around with, uh, like, maybe some abgro normal growth. And that's how we start blending some of this stuff. So it's not like a perfect, like, here works out perfectly, but here's, like, this jaw still growing out of the bottom of this. See, or even, even this guy. Coming out of there. so funny yeah I'm pretty excited to print my helmet that I did the last couple times in the stream uh, that's also going to be a massive print I might actually do that on a higher resolution so it might go up to like the 200 180 to 200 uh, hour range so that's going to be interesting to make sure that doesn't fail to get as much detail as we can because just because there's so much de small detail that i feel like we need to capture and that i i want to just fine tune and not have to do from scratch when i uh when i when i uh take it out and print it So that's still reading pretty good. Maybe we could add a tongue too or something. Let's go back to our sphere. Let's actually shrink that down.
So from here we can start adding like blend. Let's save it first actually, and then we can do a little a little more creative parts on the, on the actual scam pumpkin. Uh, let's see, this is file number seven. Um, uh, what's my favorite brush? Uh, <laughs> damn standard. Actually, yeah, damn standard. Uh, to me, actually, my favorite brush is Move. To be honest, because I feel like Move is general. Either if I'm using the iPad, if I'm using ZBrush, or if I'm using VR, it's the, the the tool that I can rely on. That's the same almost on all the apps. Where like in some of the other app, you know, other apps, like there's not really a damn standard, or there's not really this or that. So I have or like Clay, I need to adapt to it. But with the with this stuff, it's it feels general, so it's, it feels good. Oh, really? A UPS on my machine? Yeah, I have a UPS on all each one of my printers because I had them go off in the middle of the night or something like that. Uh, but yeah, especially for that, right? Well, the the Race 3D has its own uh, backup resume, so even if, it, if the power does go out, it has um, it will just stop where it was at. And then I could just put more filament or just restart it or just uh, power it back on and it will continue, which is awesome. I wish some of the other printers had that. So let's see, what can we do here? So this is where we can maybe start playing around with uh, blending this stuff, right? Since it's rotted and we saved it, <laughs> we can start playing around with some... integrating some of this more some of this stuff more you know so that it also breaks that edge So maybe there's some rotted areas, you know, where like... Some clay. Yeah, start adding some of this stuff to kind of make it blend. <laughs> yeah, it takes forever, bro. Like you can't even imagine. Like, uh, like there's times when I just like, especially when I was printing this thing, it's like I would just kind of watch him. It's like, okay, it's it's not even a quarter ways done. It's gonna take forever. Um, it's like watching paint dry. Yeah, printing is one of those things that you need to have much patience for us. We got like uh, eight minutes left, guys. Um, any questions? Any? Let's 
save this and try uh, let's save this and try what uh what I would do after I'm, I'm done with this uh, so you guys can see kind of what I'm what I'm heading to uh, let's move all these guys up I think that's all the pieces First, we're going to have to go and delete lower and higher and all these guys so that they don't complain. Those guys actually don't have subdivisions, which is awesome. So we could do merge. So see, now we can see the whole thing starting to get there, right? But right now it's still not one piece, right? It's still multiple pieces. Which, if I start blending stuff, it's not going to blend correctly. So this is where we need to... Uh, well, I guess it's, it's remeshing now. Life lover, thanks. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, where you could download it, you could download it... Uh, and from my, from my uh, Gumroad my interface and then you could just strip it out and use it as your own or whatever. Oh yeah, look at that DLP printer had frozen. Yeah, one thing I heard about the frozen though is it's really, really loud, right? So, okay, so now we have this all one together, right? So now, now I can go in here and start blending some of this stuff even nicer so that it's... And that's where we could... You could either do that or you could use uh, some of the clay. See, clay kind of blends it all so that you don't have any edges. I'm just kind of showing you guys what I'm, what I'm going to do after this so that I get it ready for, for printing, you know? So that you don't have these like like crazy marks of where it looks like it, it tape like where you can see where it starts and then to see like those hard edges. So you want it to feel like it's ripping out of the thing, right? Like if it's like a plastic bag and not like it's just inserted like the way it is now. Hey, what's up? Looking sick. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. But look at that. Yeah, that's kind of where we got to in the last, uh, I guess, hour and a half. Let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can push this and take this quickly to, uh, to key shot. Maybe we'll go over a couple more minutes if there's nobody after me. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. And then from there, now you could modify it and tweak it more and, and really make it more cartoony or a lot more expressive, you know, uh, at this point. Or take it into Keyshot and... So every time I take, take stuff into Keyshot, I always change the focal length. And let's see, let's put an environment here. I don't really want it to be on the ground. Then from there, you can just play around with a couple different materials, you know. Um, oh, you're welcome. 
yeah if there's anything else else feel free to contact me via email or if you want uh instagram or something just remind me you ch watch the stream what you're looking for oh cool i'm glad you guys digged it but yeah from there you just do some cool renders print it out and there you go you have your own pumpkin or you can make it into a full character maybe i'll make this into a full character i don't know we'll see The reason the skin is not working like I'm used to. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me now before we leave, because we're about to we're about to be done. But I really appreciate you guys uh, showing up to the stream, giving me some feedback. Hopefully you guys learned something. Um, I had fun. Hopefully you guys did too. And from there we can still add more detail to this but you know if you're doing this for Halloween once you add a little bit of a paint job should be all good uh, my Instagram is magvfx uh, let's see if I can find the link real quick for you guys that's my Instagram feel free to check it out follow me if you guys want to see what I'm up to uh, But yeah, guys, so this is uh, this is where we end. But thanks. I really appreciate you guys joining. Uh, I'll be back in two weeks from now. Uh, maybe we'll start doing a, a new helmet or we'll start doing something from my iPad to this. Um, print out a full character or something. We'll see. Uh, all based on what's inspiring me. Hopefully, maybe that Rick Baker book will uh, give me some more ideas. Yeah, I'm glad you guys digged it. Thanks for joining. Cool. Yeah, we got a we got a cool little prop going, right? Awesome guys. Thank you. Signing off. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me.